today we're, we're kind of uh, going through the whole last Sunday for Doug and his family as they've been here with us this, this year. So we're going to have the, the brunch immediately following our service or following our service here today. So you're all welcome to stay for that and uh, be a part of that, that uh, farewell. Also, um, but Doug will be here next week because next week I leave with some of our youth on a mission trip, so I won't even be in worship. But so he'll be actually his last Sunday's next week. But since I'm leaving, we're doing all of that here today. So um, join us for for brunch after service. And at the end of this service, we'll also we'll do our little service of Godspeed um, as we send him on his way, even though he still hasn't had a week. So kind of a delayed Godspeed kind of thing. Um, Next week also is uh, the LCW is doing their like every four month uh, birthday celebration. So that will be next week on the 13th after the second service. So join them for them. Uh, for those who had their birthdays in May, June, July, and August. Or any of you would like to stay and be a part of that at lunch in next week. Um, also, as I, my sermon last week talked a little bit about how we should do, how in doing simple things make a difference. And uh, I had some people say, you know, comment about that. And so, as you see in, on the bulletin, there's some simple tasks that are available now if you'd like to kind of pick up that theme and go. Um, Pauline kind of helps us to get organized on all of our, our uh, Lutheran World Relief quilts and things. Uh, has kind of, has gotten kind of inundated with materials and stuff. And so, um, some simple task of washing all that material and ironing it and, and, and getting it ready so that it can be made into quilt tops, or even the simply sewing uh, some blocks together and getting that prepared so that the, the quilt top can be put together. So, uh, some pretty simple tasks. And if you'd like to help out with some of those things, uh, talk to Pauline. I know she's got plenty down there. She can she can get you the instructions and tell you tell you what you need to do. But. Uh, Talk to Pauline, and then there's some things that can be done as we kind of continue to build all those quilts that we sent to move the world with you. Um, also, I think there's an insert. If not, uh, they're, they're available on the table for the for the script cards. If you have uh, not turned in your script order, they'll be placed uh, earlier this or next uh, early next week. So please turn them in so we can get those ordered. I think that pretty much takes care of, of that. As far as the service goes, we might have run our uh, With One Voice booklet uh, that's, that you find in the pews in front of you. Um, we have some special music today. The choir will be singing between the readings, and uh, so we uh, we welcome them. And then uh, Gus, who is a friend of Gus from the seminary, will be singing uh, during the offertory time. So we thank you for coming and sharing his gifts as well. We want to remember all of those who are on our prayer list today. Um, one who we've been praying for, Jill Hawkinson. Uh, I understood uh, somebody told me the first service that she had passed away earlier this week. So we want to remember her family during this time of mourning. But we also want to remember um, Ruby Ingle Key and um, Maud Winky and Margaret Graves who are still in the hospital. So they're recovering from their surgeries. So please remember them as they recover. With that, I invite you to rise as we continue with our service with the confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. In the presence of God, who sees our hearts and our minds, let us confess our sin. God of strength, we confess that we are captive to the power of sin that dwells within us. We put ourselves first and others last. What we think will make us happy leaves us longing for more. Even when we want to do what is good, we find ourselves doing the opposite. Rescue us from that strip of our lives and raise us up day by day that we may be alive. Sisters and brothers, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are justified by God's gift as a grace. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, whom we have received forgiveness of sin. 
life and salvation. Our opening hymn is number 726.
You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lesson. A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious, he he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a foal, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bowl will be cut off and he shall command his peace to all the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare, that I will restore you in double the word of the Lord.
reading from Roman. I do not understand my own action, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can do what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be the law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my innermost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will well rescue me from the body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ is very able for the beating of God. Those cookies, those are for later. Oh, this is people in right now. Those cookies are for 
later. The next thing you know, your hand's just walking across the table and it grabs one. The next thing you know, it's in your mouth. But you knew you weren't supposed to, right? Sometimes we do things that we aren't supposed to. We know that we're not supposed to. And we want to do the right thing. But then also we still do the wrong thing. It happens, doesn't it, sometimes? Maybe brother says something to sister. And the sister goes, ooh, and says something nasty back. But you know that you're not supposed to. Or a friend says something to you. And you say something nasty back. And you know you're not supposed to. Right? It happens. But Jesus says, there's another way. There's another way. And come to Him because He'll He'll make it easier for you. He wants to make it easier for you. All you do is think about Him before you respond. Before you let your hand fall up and get those cookies. Because He wants to make it easier for you. Much easier for you. And that's what we hear today in the gospel. That's about this yoke. And a yoke is something that actually people put on horses and help them hold things. And what He's saying is His yoke, that's his yoke is really light. It's really easy to live by His ways if you just stay focused on that. So that's what He asks for us to do is to stay focused. Not go after those cookies when we're not supposed to. And not say those things that we want to say, but we're not supposed to. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks. Thanks for your Son who you sent down. We give you thanks for the the light yoke that He offers us. We give you thanks for His humble heart. We give you thanks because when we follow these things and look towards these things, we know that we are behaving the way that you ask us to behave, but also behaving the way that we truly want to be, truly want to be, even though sometimes we don't always get there. We lift up all these things to you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I need some help. Because now I'm down here with four on my knees. Who's going to help me out? <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. So what if we follow Jesus? And we leave our families, as Jesus has said for some of them. Or what if we let the dead very dead. There are so many what ifs that we are encountering. So many what ifs that Jesus helps us to encounter. And in today's reading, in Matthew, it's no different. What if we recognize that flute and we begin to dance? Jesus is knocking at the door all the time. Jesus is in the Spirit, and the Spirit is in God, and God is in Jesus. They are knocking at the door all the time with opportunities of what ifs. What if? What if I trust? What if I truly trust the Lord that everything will be all right, no matter what? That's the question, isn't it? Are we trusting? Can we trust in that? We're always presented with a choice. A choice of what if we do, and what if we don't. As I was preparing this sermon, I had received an email. And it was pretty disturbing. And I knew how I wanted to respond. But I also knew that I needed to pray about it and have patience about it. So on one hand, I had this way that I wanted to respond. And I had this other way that I knew I should respond. And the way I wanted to respond had some very, very colorful language. <laughs> now, I have been known to write those emails and then hit cancel. Because that way I can get it out. And as I wrote this email, I also knew the consequences of writing this email, this response. I knew it hurt me. It could hurt my family. It could hurt the person that I responded to. It could do all sorts of hurt. So I had the old self saying, yeah, do this, because it's going to feel really good. <laughs> and I didn't want it to. But I also had the new self saying, no, God, you don't do this. This is not how you behave. And I said, you know, this is not how I want to be. But I also 
don't think this is how Jesus wants us to be, how Jesus wants us to respond. So the only thing I really had at my disposal was prayer and patience. I found myself with clenched teeth, with a sore neck, with a sore jaw, and a head just begging to come on. So I said, what if? What if I relied upon the ability given to me? The ability to speak to God in prayer. So I want to respond in my own way, the self-centered about me. Yet, I want to respond at the same time to this what if. I want to respond to this new person, centered on Christ, thinking about all of God's children. But I know that if I responded the way I wanted to, it would feel good. But I also knew the other would feel good too. Paul in Romans letters today struggles with the same ideas. He struggles with the idea that he's wanting to do good, but if he does good, then he's done wrong. And if he wants to do wrong, then he's done wrong. And if he wants to do good, and he just keeps going back and forth. Did you hear the whole circle around in that, that reading? I'm just glad I didn't have to do the reading. It was a circle. That battle rages for many of us. I battle rages for me inside all the time. I want to do what is right. Yet I keep doing what is wrong. I want to be the new self. Yet the old self keeps calling at me to be the old self, self-centered, thinking about me. But I want to do what is right. That's how I want to respond to this what if. All these things that we are given opportunities to respond to. So what if I allow my temptations with that old self? The self-satisfying, self-centered went out over the new self, the one that is looking towards Christ, looking about God's children. Jesus sends us a warning in the text that we actually skipped today, Matthew. He speaks to an unrepentant people. Now, in this particular case, it's to multiple cities, but it applies to each and every one of us. It's not just about those cities, it's about us too. Jesus says in 24, but I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. Jesus sends us that warning. This is not the first warning, however, that we receive. The people receive that we receive. This is not our first warning, how our choices can have an impact not only now, but later on. Last week, when speaking of rewards in Matthew 10, Verse 40, Jesus responds, Jesus speaks of welcoming the disciples, and therefore welcoming Jesus and the Father. But the inverse of that is exactly true as well. That not welcoming the disciples is not welcoming Jesus and is not welcoming the Father. Now the consequences of that are also spelled out in the week before that. In Matthew 10, verses 32 through 33, Jesus says that the results of this not welcoming, denying Jesus, is also Jesus denying us before the Father. So now that I've given you all this gloomy news and all these choices of what ifs, it's probably pretty intimidating. And in fact, it can seem very damning. But there is good news. There is good news because the good news comes in the form of the cross. The cross held the redeeming, the redeeming love of God in Jesus Christ. The resurrected Jesus is the key for us for the answers to the what is. Jesus is no longer on the cross, but he is our answer. In Romans 7, 25 to 24, it says, Wretched man, and this is also women, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, if hearing it from Paul in Romans is not enough for you, then let's hear what Jesus said. He says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. And earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and from the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for your 
Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Jesus says it's not through the study of the Torah or anything else that we get this knowledge of how to answer to these challenges. We gain the knowledge through Jesus. And he tells us this when he says, All things have been handed over to me by the Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And here's the kicker. And anyone, he says anyone, anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Jesus chooses to reveal to you, to me, us. The disciples, Jesus chooses us to know the way. Here is the what if that we can all answer. It applies to each and every one of us. It's one that we just cannot refuse if we recognize the gift in itself. You heard it today. Come to me. All that are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. If you tell me of somebody today, a single person, if you can tell me a single person in the world who has no burdens, is not weary from things that are going on in the world, then I can show you somebody that's in denial. Jesus doesn't judge us. Judge us for who we are. Jesus knows who we are, and that's why he wants to lessen our load. He wants to lessen the burden for us. He wants us to have a way to walk in what is that is lighter in the load. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you'll find rest. Rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke, the yoke to pull our heavy loads, our own burdens, is lessened by the yoke of Jesus. The yoke is the answer, the answer to all the what is that we encounter each and every day. It leads to rest for our souls. It leads to rest for our souls because Jesus is both gentle and humble in heart. He takes compassion upon us. And he stands in front of us. Jesus stands in front of us at the time of judgment. He will be there in front of us. The what is, the what is answer is Jesus. The Son of God, who came into this world not to condemn the world, who came into this world not to condemn the world, but to save the world from all who believe in, so that they will not perish, will not perish, but have eternal life. The yoke of Jesus is not condemning. The yoke of Jesus is free. The yoke of Jesus is saving us from all the what-ifs that we encounter in life. Amen.
please set up your bulletins. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Strengthened by the Spirit who gives us words to speak and hearts to care, let us bring our hopes and needs to God who listens. Oh God, strengthen and empower your church. Where it is weak or timid, raise up leaders. Support it with your gift of inner strength and peace. Let us pray. Greater God, the earth groans when we do not regard it with loving care. Forgive us for polluting the water and the air, for stripping the land of its natural resources, and for caring more about our own comfort than long-term health of the planet. Let us pray. How beautiful it is when people dwell together in unity. Help us to appreciate the differences among us, to seek to understand one another, and to work together for harmony. Let us pray. Holy source of hope. So many people are in pain today. Give us hearts of compassion, hands that heal, and lips that speak words of comfort and encouragement. Surround us with your love and all those in need. Let us pray. As you walk with Abraham and Sarah, the Magi, and all who follow your call. Be with those who travel this day, pilots and truckers, cab drivers and train engineers, those on vacation, and those on the road for work. Let us pray. God of compassion, mercy, and healing, we lift up to you today all those on our prayer list. Bill, Dina, the family of Jill, Margaret, Dave, Bill, Lisa, Sherry, Lena, Maude, Ruby, Darren, Delma, Terry, and all those that we lift up now out loud or silently within our hearts. Let us pray. Alpha and Omega, you are with us from the first breath to our last. We give thanks for the faithful departed who now rest in your loving arms. May the promise of the resurrection sustain those who trust in you. Let us pray. We lift our prayers to you, God of mercy, confident that all things are in your hands. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And all the Please share the peace with one another. Peace with you.
Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and uh, this time we're going to have our little service of God's feet for Doug and his family as they uh, prepare to head back to uh, uh, to our work. So you can come up too if you want. <laughs> no, you don't want. Well, okay. <laughs> um, Ed's going to come up also uh, on behalf of the internship committee. Um, Ed, along with Carlin Killian, yeah. um, Brian Brown. Fernal and uh, Kat Newloman were the internship yeah. committee that helped to guide Doug in this year. Um, so we give thanks for their service as well. So, and just to remind you that following our service today, we will go down and have a brunch and we'll have more to, to say. Welcome and thank them for their time. Let us begin. God, our Creator, and our Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish I had this memorized so you'd have to look at it so well. <laughs> Doug, when we welcomed you last fall at First English Lutheran Church, it was our joy and blessed privilege to extend to you the hand of Christian fellowship. Today, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom you have faithfully confessed before this altar, we wish you God's speed as you return to your home back in Warburg, the Elijah Seminary. Chris, Travis and Becky, God has blessed you in this fellowship, and God has blessed us through you in your faithful attendance and worship as a member of First English Church. But not only that, you know, the hours spent in coffee hour talking together before and after service, seeing you take part in a bell choir and helping with busy hands, it's like you've been here for a long, long time. And Becky teaching you in Sunday school and helping out with camp, and helping out with any little Rasta that was running around and couldn't be, <laughs> couldn't be held down, she would always manage to take care of it. Uh, we thank God for who you are and for what you did among us, for us, and with us. Doug, God has blessed you and you blessed us in your faithful service as our intern. May you be blessed and glorify God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are present with power in every place. Listen with kindness to the petitions that we offer on behalf, on behalf of Doug, Chris, Travis, and Becky, who are leaving us now. Shield them from all evil. Guide them in every right way. Bless them going out and coming in. Give strength to obey your will and to work in you, which the work which in you are preparing to give to them to do. Grant that being united in fellowship with you, we may meet again. Ultimately, be ultimately meet before your throne in heaven, and to be united in your love forever through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. By the congregation, rise for the You got applause, I guess. <laughs> And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 873. 